All right, Joe here. Welcome back to We Need to Talk. This is the show that looks at football on the internet over the past seven days. A seven days that has seen the worst transfer announcement of all time. Seriously. Believe me, I'm real. Robert Lewandowski doing a madness in Bayern Munich training. And Alfonso Davis finding out that he's on the cover of FIFA 21. Anyway, today we need to talk about cult heroes. Okay, I'm holding my hands up before we start. This was a very slow news week. I couldn't find any good stories really, but I did see there was quite some debate on Twitter about streets will never forget footballers. If you're wondering what a streets will never forget footballer is, it's effectively a modern day cult hero. You know, someone who lit up the Premier League with magical moments and magical goals, but overall never really achieved a great deal so i thought to myself you know the rankings videos we've done over the past couple of months they've done pretty well so why not rank the best streets will never forget ballers i could find so i put out a tweet yesterday and it got like 300 plus responses in the first hour easily the most engagement we've ever had on a we need to talk video so i've done my very best to whittle down over 300 responses to 15 names. I've also only picked Premier League players, so don't get your knickers in a twist about that because there was so many sick ballers on the continent that people mentioned. So if you enjoyed this video and want a part two on European footballers that the streets will never forget, hit the like button right now. If this video gets to 5,000 likes, I'll do a European version. All right, first name on the list, Morton Gamst Pedersen. <sighs> What a baller he was. He was at Blackburn for nine years. I think he scored something like 50 goals for the club. I mean, one of the best cannons of a left peg I've seen in the Prem. He made everything look very, very easy. And it was something about the frosted tips. Whenever he stood over a dead ball with frosted tips against your team, you knew you were f***. It was going in the top bins. Absolute wizard over a dead ball. I'm going to stick Pedersen tier two. All right, the ultimate streets will never forget baller up next. Adel Tarab, the god of SWNF. When I first saw Adel Tarab play, it was like watching a year 11 against year sevens on the Astro turf. He was playing in the championship and quite frankly, he was taking the... He was just nutmegging people, double drag backs, you know, he was just sticking it top bins. It was so nonchalant. There was one that I think he, he rolled into the bottom corner with no backlift, like he was Ronaldinho, just pure filth. But, you know, it was in the championship, wasn't it? When he comes to the Prem, it just never worked out in the Prem, did it? I remember how I read that, calling him fat, and then he ended up as Benfica's defensive midfielder. But whatever, because he's the god of streets we'll never forget. Tier one. Clint Dempsey is up next, Fulham's finest, America's finest potentially in the Premier League, pre-Christian Pulisic, maybe put some respect on Brian McBride's name, another Fulham hero, um, do you know what, he not only had top class technique Clint Dempsey, but he could do the gritty stuff well, he was a bit of a that he would get stuck in wouldn't he, I don't believe he's a true SWNF baller, I don't believe it. So I'm going to stick him in tier three. I feel like I've been disrespectful there. I'm not disrespecting his cult hero status at Fulham, but just didn't have that sort of the arrogance and like the madness in his in his technique. Oh, this next one, meet you. <laughs> now I've just said you know Clint Dempsey didn't have that madness in his sort of technique, and meet you probably didn't either. But I think meet you is the biggest one season wonder in football history. And there's something about that freakish season, you know, when Swansea were playing like Barcelona under Michael Laudrup. 
They finished ninth. They won the League Cup that year. I think Mitru scored 22 goals in all competitions. Absolute insanity. But it wasn't just his goal score, it was the variety as well. Left foot, right foot, headers. It was like watching Ruud van Isseroy in and around the box. Honestly, it, he was unplayable for Swansea. Genuinely unplayable. And then I think the next season he scored two goals. And then about two seasons later he was playing non-league football. But nevertheless, you know, Michu. He's tier one, isn't he? I love him. The next two, I've just got to combine them. Because Demba Barr and Papi Cisse should never have been separated. These bastards was like the Anton Deck of Newcastle's forward line. Senegalese gods. I mean, if you rewind the clock back to like that 2012 season when they were playing under Alan Pardew, I think they got a combined 29 goals. 29 goals under Alan Pardew. That's when he signed that 55-year contract, Alan Pardew, at Newcastle. And you know what? The Cissé goal alone against Chelsea, the banana shot that left Petr Cech scrambling about like he was on ice. I've got to put him in Tier 2. I'll combine and put him in Tier 2. You know, when they split up, I was actually saddened. It was like Robbie Williams leaving Take That. Not that I really was asked about that. <laughs> Weird reference. But he should never have gone to Chelsea, Denver Bar. Should have just stuck it out and created what would have become one of the iconic Premier League duos. Next up, we've got an interesting one for me. I'm not sure whether I would have had him on here, but loads of people suggested Yannick Balassi. And I think he probably is a little bit of a cult hero at Crystal Palace. I mean, the one trick I really remember was the one against Tottenham Hotspur. I think it was Christian Eriksen, if I remember rightly, that he flicked it over. I also remember one, I think it was against Dejan Lovren, where he like put his hand down and was brushing dust off the ball. Absolutely bizarre. So we did have those sort of moments of magic. But overall, would I say he is a streets will never forget footballer? I found him quite forgettable. I'll put him tier four, though, just because he did have some absolutely filthy tricks in the bag. Oh, the next one. Dimi Paye. This guy was an actual joke. I couldn't even get the words out there. Dimitri Pai was a joke. How the hell did West Ham sign him? I think when he arrived at West Ham the season before, he was the top creator in Europe's top five leagues. The most assists of any player, I believe. West Ham had no right to get hold of this player. He was way too good for him, let's be honest. I actually interviewed Mikhail Antonio last season and I asked him about Dimitri Pai and he called him an alien. Apparently in training, he would just pick the ball up, dribble past the entire team and score. Or then he would just pick the ball up, whip it top bins and score. Master of the free kick as well, Dimi Paye. I just think he was so good, it'd be rude not to put him in Tier 1. I feel like I'm putting loads of players in Tier 1, but he's got to be up there. The next one, I'll just keep it simple. So come on, Wilfred Boney. Score some goals for Swansea. <laughs> worst chant ever. Absolutely one of the worst chants ever. But he was good for about 18 months, wasn't he? He was f***ing good for about 18 months. I think in 14-15, was that the season? He scored 16 goals. He was filling that Michu void pretty bloody well, wasn't he? Never really worked out for him at Man City because he couldn't get a game ahead of Sergio Aguero, if we're totally honest. But nevertheless, a Swansea cult hero... A, a classic Streets Will Never Forget footballer. I'm going to put him in Tier 3. Because I don't see him on the levels of Papi, Cissé and Bar, And I don't see him... You know, he's not a meet you, is he? So, yeah, Tier 3. Loads of people were mentioning players from the Stoke team. The iconic Tony Pulis Stoke team. And I could have picked Ken Win jones I could have picked Ricardo Fuller. What a baller he was, by the way. But I went for the king of the club. Rory De Lapp. Terribly average footballer, by the way. Absolutely a stinky average footballer. But he had some arm, didn't he? That f could throw ball. Um, I think they only have to actually scored like three goals directly from a long throw in, by the way, if you read up on the statistics. But nevertheless, it just caused f***ing chaos, didn't it? You knew going away to Stoke it was going to be lump it long, long throw ins. <laughs> I remember one team kicked the ball out for a corner rather than giving the laugh a throw in. Unnecessary. But nevertheless, you know, they were a boring team to watch Stoke. But I've got to have somebody in tier five. I feel harsh doing it because I love Rory. I'll put him tier five just because I need a name in there, but he doesn't deserve it. This next name, Hatem Ben Arthur, uh, there's only one tier he can really go into. In terms of actual dribbling ability, I think Hatem Ben Arthur 
is one of the best I've seen at pace. He could run at pace and the ball was super glued to the inside of his foot. I remember the goal he scored against Bolton where he spun about four men on the halfway line, turned them out into cardboard cutouts and then sat, I don't think it was Adam Bogdan, <laughs> down. Shout out the ginger Gru. Gru, fucking you know hell, I'm tired. Shout out the ginger goalkeeping crew is what I tried to say. Uh, but yeah, Hatton Benafa, absolutely tier one. No right to be playing for Newcastle. But I think that was another Alan Pardew masterclass. Giovanni up next. An interesting name. One of Hull City's finest. Although he played for Barcelona before that. And he also played for Man City as well. Let's not forget. Back when they weren't quite the elite club they are now. But I feel like it was at Hull, wasn't it? Where he became that truly, streets will never forget, iconic player. Especially for his free kicks, wasn't it? I think it was back-to-back -back weeks. He scored like 30-yard screamers, one against Arsenal, maybe one against Tottenham Hotspur as well, against the North London boys. In fact, he single-handedly, didn't he? He single-handedly kept Hull in the division in 2009. Top scorer. I think they finished one point clear of relegation. But it was Hull. And uh, two free, four, five free kicks. Yes. You know, Mort Gaps Pedersen did that, didn't he? And he did it for like nine years at Blackburn. Oh, I don't know. Giovanni's a tough one. I'll just put him middle of the pack. Giovanni tier three. The next one has to go in because of Doogie Critchley. You know, he's pestering me pretty much to put Asamoa Jan in there. Decent baller. I'll accept decent baller. But levels of Michu and maybe not even Boney, I don't think. Did Asamoa Jan hit those Boney levels? I think he only ever scored 10 goals in a league season for Sunderland, and that was one year. And I'm trying to judge these players, and I didn't really with Tarab, but he's an exception, on their Premier League output. And 10 goals, I don't think he scored in his second season at Sunderland. Sorry, Doogie. Asmo Jean tier four. JJ Akocha is up next. I don't really need to say too much about the man so good they named twice, do I? I... It's actually rude to call JJ Kocha a streets will never forget footballer because that does a disservice to how much of a baller he was throughout his entire career. I mean, any man that can rainbow flick Ray Parler without getting laid clean out, you know is ridiculous. Do you know what though? I feel like it would be a total disservice to actually say, oh, you know, he's just a streets will never forget footballer because he was way better than that, JJ Kocha. The things he was doing in Germany, the things he was doing for Paris Saint-Germain before Bolton got to be taken into account here because his entire career, he was a sensational player. I don't even want to put him in tier one because I feel like it's rude to put him alongside Michi. I'm going to put him in tier two because he's the best player on the list and deserves more to be honest with you. Final player then, Andre Arshavin. Gunas would not shut up about him being in this streets will never forget tier list. You know, four goals against Liverpool, to be fair. I think he won the UEFA Cup with Zenit the season before he joined Arsenal. Then he crushed it at the Euros, didn't he? That's right. And then at Arsenal, he was a phenomenon in that first season. The goal against Barcelona, I really remember as a standout moment. But is he to rab levels? I can't put him tier one. Can I? I'll stick him tier two alongside JJ. Again, that's just a disservice to JJ Kocha. But yeah, Arshavin tier two. All right, so that was my tier list of streets will never forget footballers. I realize I've missed hundreds out. So as I said at the start, if you want to see me do a part two to this, hit the like button. Let's try and get this video to 5,000 likes. If you did enjoy it, hop over to Continental Club where Doogie Critchley and the boys are talking about more serious European footballing matters. Thanks very much for watching. We'll catch you later.